Hi, I'm Steve Howd with Imtra. I'm one of the product managers for our Slepner product line. And today I'm gonna to be going over some of the most common troubleshooting steps for our DC thrusters. This video is intended to be supplemental to our troubleshooting guide, as well as the troubleshooting steps laid out in the installation and user manuals of the Slepner products. In the following video, I'm gonna be referring to some of the control system components. So I've laid them out here so that you know what you're looking at when I reference them in the video. Obviously we have our thruster here and our main control harness that will run up to our joystick or control pad. There are a few different styles. The joystick is the most common. If you do have two control stations on your boat, there will be a Y cable here and another harness that runs up to the second station. Here we have our fuse and fuse holder and you will have a battery cable running to the battery on one side and then on the other side it's going to run from the fuse to the battery switch and that battery switch is just manually turned on and off. This is an auto main switch. For this video uh, we will not be discussing this. Uh, we will only be discussing if you're using a manual battery switch. For the purpose of troubleshooting, we will remove the solenoid cover. Here are the components on the motor that we are going to be working with today. The battery positive cable and the battery negative cable. The positive feed into the solenoid, the D1 terminal, D2 terminal, D1 coil positive feed, D1 coil gray signal wire, the A2 terminal, the IPC sensor wire, the D2 coil positive feed, the D2 coil blue signal wire, the control system negative lead, the thermo switch lead, and the IPC control box. If you have voltage at the thruster and the control panel does not turn on, first thing to check is battery power. A fuse should be installed on the positive battery cable within 72 inches of the battery. Check that the fuse is not blown. A battery switch is usually installed close to the fuse and battery. Check that that switch is turned on. Next we will check for voltage at the thruster using a multimeter. Check from the battery positive terminal to the battery negative terminal. You should read at least some voltage at the thruster. If there is no voltage at all, there is a problem with the power supply. Check the battery, the fuse, the battery switch, and the cabling. If we do have voltage at the thruster, we will next check for voltage on the control harness leading to the control panel. So we will Disconnect the control panel from the control panel harness. With the multimeter set to DC volts, check from the red positive wire to the black negative wire on the control harness pigtail. If there is battery voltage at both the thruster and the control panel, then there is a problem with the control panel and it should be replaced. The following steps should be completed if the control panel turns on but the thruster does not run or runs incorrectly or no voltage is coming to the control panel when you measured in step A3. First, we will bypass the control panel and check the thruster control box and solenoid. To bypass the control panel, we will simply unplug the joystick or whatever panel is being used. We'll use a small jumper wire. You can use anything from a paper clip these are low amperage wires, so there's no strong current that's being carried on these. Jump from red to blue for starboard run. And red to gray for port run. Be careful not to jump red to black as this will permanently damage the control box. If the thruster runs in both directions when jumping red to blue and red to gray, then the control panel or joystick is likely damaged and that will need to be replaced. 
If the thruster does not run or runs in one direction only, we will move on to bypass the thruster control box and check solenoid operation. Disconnect the white IPC sensor wire from the A2 terminal on the solenoid. With a long jumper wire, jump from the negative battery stud to the D1 coil gray signal wire for port run. and the D2 coil blue signal wire for starboard run. If the thruster still does not run or runs in one direction only, check for solenoid output. If the thruster runs in both directions, move on to troubleshooting the thermo switch. To check for the solenoid output, we're gonna get our multimeter back out. We're gonna make sure that the sensor wire is still unplugged and we're gonna put our alligator clamps on the negative terminal of the motor and the A2 terminal of the solenoid where you unplug the white wire from. Next, we're gonna do the same jump test that we did before, going from the negative terminal of the motor to either the blue or the gray spade terminal. When we do this jump test, we should see our operating voltage or some voltage here on our multimeter. If there is no voltage on the A2 terminal during this test, then the solenoid is likely damaged and needs to be replaced. If there is voltage on the A2 terminal during this test, then the motor is likely damaged. You should contact IMTRA for more assistance and to send your motor back for servicing. Next, I'll show you how to troubleshoot the thermo switch. We're gonna follow the brown wire from the control box to a connector that runs into the motor. We are gonna unplug that connector with our long jumper wire, we're going to jump from the brown wire going to the control box to the negative terminal on the motor. This is going to provide a direct negative signal to the control box and bypass the thermo switch completely. We will go to our joystick now and try to run the thruster from there. If the thruster runs now, then the thermo switch is failed and needs to be replaced. If the thermo switch is failed, the thruster will run during this test and when we are jumping out the solenoid in step B2. Jumping the brown wire to the negative stud is for testing purposes only. The thruster should never be run in the field in this way because it bypasses the thermal protection of the motor completely. The steps in part C should be performed if your thruster is running permanently as soon as power is given to the thruster or intermittently on its own. First and foremost, shut the battery power off to the thruster immediately, either via the automatic main switch or the manual battery disconnect switch. We will then begin testing one control piece at a time to determine which part of the system is malfunctioning. First, we will unplug the control panel or joystick and the IPC control box that sits right under the solenoid. Turn the power back onto the thruster with the same battery switch that you turned off previously. If the thruster starts to run immediately now, turn the power back off to the thruster. The resting contacts on the solenoid have likely welded together and the solenoid needs to be replaced. If you turn the power on to the thruster now and the thruster does not run, turn the power back off and plug the IPC control box back in. Turn the power back on at the battery switch. If the thruster does start running, shut the battery power off immediately. 
the IPC control box is causing the issue and should be replaced. If the thruster does not run, turn the power back off to the thruster and plug the joystick back in. Turn the power back on to the thruster. If the thruster does start running, shut the battery power off immediately. The joystick is causing the issue and should be replaced. If you have multiple joysticks in the system, repeat this step with each joystick. If any of them cause the thruster to run on its own, that joystick should be replaced. If you have any questions or concerns when running through the troubleshooting steps laid out here, please give us a call or send us an email. We can be reached uh, anytime 8.30 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday. Our customer service desk line is 508-995-7000, or you can send an email to info at imtra.com.